Madison City officials are keeping a close eye on water levels after some rain overnight and more rain coming later this week. And as Foxconn builds its North American manufacturing campus in Wisconsin, it's teaming up with the state's flagship university to find its future workers. This is News 3 This Morning. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to News 3 This Morning, 6 o'clock right now on a very sticky Monday, August 27th. Yeah, it is a don't talk to me kind of forecast. But we want to talk to him. I know, I know, but I'm just the messenger. Just the messenger. It's a just I'm the just... messenger kind of forecast. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's true. I'm just trying to alert you that it is going to be very uncomfortable this afternoon. In fact, today's an alert day for those hot and humid conditions across southern Wisconsin. It is the end of August and it'll feel like it today. Heat index values up to 98, some Oof. spots close to 100 possibly. Oof. It's going to be brutal today. Tomorrow is an alert day as well, mainly for the threat for severe weather coming later on in the day. So a couple of days where weather is going to be a big story. This morning we are watching some showers move through southwestern Wisconsin. They should hold together long, uh, long enough to make it to the Madison area as we head towards the mid morning hours. Most of the activity right now is to our north and east. However, there is a cluster of showers and isolated thunderstorms rolling across central Iowa. Again, that is tracking east northeast. So still a chance to get wet yet this morning, but for the afternoon, we'll start to dry out, turn partly sunny with highs around 88 degrees. Again, feeling as much as 10 degrees warmer when you factor in the humidity. Now take a look at your first alert traffic maps this morning. Traffic has been difficult to say the least in the Madison area, still dealing with road closures and slowdowns in the uh, Isthmus area. East Johnson Street is still closed due to flooding. We're starting to see some volume increase on East Washington. Many closures downtown, but the Beltline looking pretty good right now. Looking out around Dane County, most roads have opened back up, but there still is a closure on U.S. Highway 14 between KP and 78, basically Black Earth to Mazomany. Otherwise, no accidents to report this morning. Keep your fingers crossed. On I know, that. seriously. All right. Be a rough go. Thank you. You're welcome. So we just saw those backups downtown. So if you work downtown and can stay home today, do it. That's the message from Madison Mayor Paul Soglin as many parts of the east side of the city continue to deal with flooding. The mayor's going to give another update to the public at 1 o'clock this afternoon. In the meantime, city's telling people just to avoid yeah. driving downtown if you can. Josh Spreider is live just east of the Capitol this morning with the latest. Good morning, Josh. The city says you should be prepared for more closures at any time. With rain in the forecast this week, the concern. Caution as they're at risk. Water on most streets is down compared to last week, but full storm drains mean a couple inches of rain could lead to more floods. As you mentioned, the city is recommending people avoid driving downtown as a way to help ease traffic congestion. Mayor Soglin says if you do need to drive downtown today, you should try coming in from the west or south sides to avoid streets like East Washington. And to help keep cars off of the roads, Metro buses were also free this weekend. That is going to continue today. Of course, you can stay with News 3 this morning. All morning long, we'll bring you the very latest on those traffic conditions. Back to you. All right, Josh Prater reporting live for us this morning. Thank you. So as Josh mentioned, still an issue out there. The flooding, the city is offering free sand, ready to fill sandbags at numerous locations today. You can get that help at a lot of the city's parks, along with city parking lots on East Main and one on the west side at McKenna Boulevard. City crews want you to bring your own shovel to load the sandbags that you take. The city of Monona is offering up sandbags for people who live there as well. Now, homeowners are being encouraged to put sandbags as close to a house's foundation as possible to avoid trapping water up against your structure. We have that sandbag information over at channel3000.com. Madison garbage crews will make some special runs today to pick up items damaged by the flooding. You, if you have large items in particular, like furniture or carpet that needs to be thrown out, the streets division is asking to contact them and set up a time for those specifically. You can find the streets division contact information on the city's website. We also have it over as well on channel3000.com. So all of that standing water, the street closure is going to mean an already busy time on the UW Madison campus is going to become even busier. We're talking about its move-in day is now it started yesterday for UW Madison students who work for the housing department and for international students. That process continues through Thursday. Now, with the potential for more flooding this week, 
The thousands of families coming to campus are going to have more trouble getting around and more trouble parking. It's never fun to park down there no. anyway. University is recommending, you heard Josh kind of allude to this earlier, that people come in from the south and west sides of the city rather than coming from the east and through downtown. Now, despite the forecast, officials do expect move-in days at the UW to go on as planned. Highway 14 between Middleton and Cross Plains is back open this morning. You briefly heard Hattie talking about it. The Wisconsin DOT opened that stretch of highway up around noon yesterday through traffic is still being detoured though so drivers should use US Highway 12 and State Highway 78 to get around there. The Highway 14 bridge west of Black Earth though is still washed out. Work is scheduled to begin this week on rebuilding Main Street in Sun Prairie. Governor Scott Walker approved an emergency contract for more than a million dollars to rebuild the intersection of, of Main Street and Highway 19 in particular. Construction is expected to be finished by the end of November. That'll be good news for yeah, those no folks kidding. in Sun Prairie. So Madison residents are going to get a chance to comment for the first time on a proposed water rate increase this week. The hearing in front of the state's Public Service Commission comes as the Madison Water Utility is dealing with a $6 million deficit. If approved by the PSC, the average Madison Water user would pay about $90 more per year. Now, the utility's last rate increase was in September of 2015. A group looking at how Madison's government works wants to get input from the city's former mayors. This is the task force on the structure of city government, and the group of alders, community members, and workers have been, or city workers, I should say, has been looking at things like whether Madison's mayor has too much power. That's why they want to bring in former mayors like Dave Chechlevish and Sue Bauman to get their thoughts on how the city runs and how that can be improved. The committee hopes to be able to talk with them at its next couple is next meeting in a couple of weeks. Madison Alders are looking to ban certain scooters before they ever get here to the city. We're talking at the Transportation and Policy and Planning Board. They're meeting today to talk about impounding these dockless electric devices and then writing tickets to anybody who uses them. So they are illegal under state law right now, but city leaders anticipate that could change. They've already caused problems in the city of Milwaukee where these so-called e-scooters have gotten in the way of bikers, pedestrians, and drivers, and they've ended up stranded on random sidewalks. Dane County Park users have their first opportunity this week to comment on paying more for some services. The county's proposed fee increases for next year, they, those include paying two more dollars for a disc golf permit and a dollar more for a camping permit. The most expensive fee increase would be six dollars more for a permit to cross country ski, mountain bike, or ride a horse on a county trail. That fee was last changed in 2011. The public hearing is Wednesday night at the Lyman Anderson Conservation Center. Seven minutes after the hour on this Monday morning, there's a major partnership being announced later this morning on the UW campus. It could lead after graduation to job opportunities with company expected to be one of Wisconsin's largest employers. We'll share a preview here in a couple of minutes. Official sunrise is at...
Good morning from the Hattio Patio. Had to grab the umbrella this time outside. Some raindrops coming down here on the west side of town. Nothing very heavy right now, but rain is in the forecast this morning. We have two alert days that I've added to the forecast today. The first one today, not necessarily for the rain, but for the high heat and humidity. This afternoon, we're going to clear out and uh, we'll look at heat index values into the upper 90s, close to 100. Again, nothing you want to mess around with if you have outdoor plans today. Be sure to stay hydrated and take extra breaks if you need it. Now, tomorrow is still going to be very hot and humid. However, there is the potential for severe weather coming later in the afternoon through the evening with a cold front moving through. So two alert days to talk about. 24 hour precipitation estimate, not bad here in and around Dane County, but to the north and northeast, some very heavy rain late yesterday and during the overnight hours. North of Milwaukee, over four inches is estimated on the radar map this morning. Parts of Columbia and Dodge County picking up over two inches of rain. So flood advisories continue for those regions. Our Doppler track showing you that we have just some light shower activity and isolated thunderstorms moving into southwestern Wisconsin. We'll zoom the map out a little bit and you can see that those showers are part of a bigger cluster of rain activity moving across Iowa. It's likely going to hold together to make it into southern Wisconsin. So through the mid morning hours, rain is a possibility. After lunchtime, though, things should quiet down for us. The severe weather outlook for today indicating a slight risk for severe weather for much of the state. Best chances, though, are likely going to be in the northern half of the state. Tomorrow here in southern Wisconsin, that's when we have a slight risk for severe storms. In addition to the uh, chance for severe weather, we're looking at quite a bit of rain. A widespread one to two inch rain fall is expected over the next two days. Here's a look at another forecast model and again painting a higher band of precipitation right across southern Wisconsin. Here's a live look from the Edgewater Sky Cam looking at downtown Madison. We do have cloudy skies this morning. Uh, no issues with fog though early today. Take a look at these temperatures. 75 degrees here in Madison. It's still 79 in Janesville, 75 in Platteville and 72 in the Dells. Dew points today are going to be climbing into the 70s and even mid and upper 70s at some point during the afternoon. So on the dew point comfort meter, we're almost off the meter. It's in that don't talk to me tropical range today. It's going to feel pretty uncomfortable. Here's a look at your heat index forecast today. And again, this particular model taking us to a heat index of 100 degrees by 4 p.m. Our future track forecast showing you that rain pushing through the area, especially southwestern Wisconsin this morning. By lunchtime, already back into the 80s. Some clearing this afternoon with highs in the mid to upper 80s. Heat index values, though, will be even higher. Staying pretty quiet overnight tonight. The rain should remain across the northern half of the state. Chances for rain, though, start to increase Tuesday afternoon and by the evening, looking at a line of showers and thunderstorms pushing through the area should wind down though early on Wednesday. Here's a look at our extended forecast then. Keep in mind today and tomorrow are alert days. After that, it gets much more comfortable around here with highs in the 70s. Now let's take a look at your first alert traffic maps this morning. We'll see what's happening on the roads. Many closures in the downtown area, but no issues on the Beltline right now. Just a few brake lights showing up at Stoughton Road. Still dealing with the closure on Highway 14. This is between Highway KP and 78, basically between Black Earth and Mazomany, where that road is still closed due to flooding. In the downtown areas, again, on the Isthmus, many roads still blocked or closed due to high water and the potential for additional flooding coming over the next two days. Drive times, though, still looking pretty good with no accidents to report. And that's your first alert traffic. Thank you very much, Hattie. It's quarter after six this morning. UW Madison is going to announce a new partnership with Foxconn later today. Chancellor Rebecca Blank will join the head of Foxconn Technology at the Wisconsin Institutes for Discovery building later this morning. Foxconn recently created a new international engineering program at UW Milwaukee. It's working to train future employees for its new North American manufacturing plant that it's building right now in Racine County. We will share the details of this new partnership 
on News 3 at 5. There's good news for anyone looking to buy a house here in Wisconsin as the number of homes on the market has increased for the second month in a row. The Wisconsin Realtors Association reports that home inventory rose 3.4 percent last month compared to the same time last year. Experts say that could be a sign of a tight market easing up for buyers a little bit after more than a year of that inventory declining. It could also mean that high prices are motivating current homeowners to sell and increasing the number of available homes out there. Last month, the median price of a home in Wisconsin was more than $190,000. That's up 7.5% from the year before. This week is your last chance to get to the Boston store at Madison's West Town Mall before it closes for good. Wisconsin-based Bonton stores filed for bankruptcy earlier this year. Its creditors announced they would close all Boston stores, Herberger's, in Yonkers locations. Wisconsin Public Radio reports that's going to happen midweek this week. The Milwaukee headquartered company has not made a profit since 2010. Now, Von Moore is looking into leasing some of Bonton's abandoned department store buildings. No word on whether the high-end retailer that already has a location in suburban Milwaukee is looking at that spot at the West Town Mall. 616 right now in Janesville City Council will continue working on a new contract for its city manager later on today. Mark Freitag was hired in Janesville in December of 2013 after a 25-year career in the Army. He had three combat deployments in the Middle East before coming to Janesville. His five-year contract ends in December and council is expected to go into closed session tonight to talk about its next steps. Council will also work to set a date next month to have a public hearing on an anti-bullying measure. Now, supporters brought up the idea after a Janesville middle schooler died by suicide earlier this year. One proposal would allow parents to be fined for their children's bullying. Critics worry the measure will be too broad and not do anything to actually solve the problem. 17, 17 minutes after the hour, probably not going to be the best day weather-wise to see the Packers practice. It's the final training camp session. In the summer open to the public today. Maybe you can figure out what <laughs> problem the backup quarterbacks are having. We'll have the latest here in a couple of minutes. And Madison Mayor Paul Soglin's encouraging people not to drive downtown if they can avoid it because of the flooding. There are still hundreds of Alliant Energy customers without power this morning after storms rolled through overnight. Hattie's watching the radar and will update the forecast that calls for even more rain next on News 3 this morning. I kept my.
Good morning, I'm meteorologist Hattie McLean. Your first alert weather forecast does include an alert day. Now, if you were outside yesterday, it was pretty warm and sticky. Today's going to be a little worse. Heat index values in the mid to upper 90s later today. For that reason, today is an alert day across southern Wisconsin. We're dealing with some rain, though, and some isolated thunderstorms this morning, mainly from Madison and points to the west. We had some very heavy rain move through overnight areas north of Madison. Still some rain, though, holding together across Iowa that is likely going to affect at least southwestern Wisconsin yet this morning. Probability of precip ticks up just a little bit by 10 o'clock this morning, then drops way off for the afternoon and the rest of the day. Most of the rain later today is going to remain in the northern part of the state. We do have an alert day in the forecast though for tomorrow with a cold front moving through the area late in the day. Another round of showers and thunderstorms is expected. It's going to be very warm and humid as well, so plenty of moisture to work with for these storms. Heavy rain as well as damaging winds will be possible later in the day on Tuesday. Stay cool today. Thank you, Hattie. It is 622 right now. There are some upgrades coming to Wisconsin's largest county fair. Janesville Gazette reports that the Walworth County Fair earned nearly $100,000 last year and it's expanding programming and building a new entrance at the fairgrounds with that extra money. That new entrance is expected to improve traffic and security on the east side of the fairgrounds. Now the Walworth County Fair expects to make profit again this year, specifically off its concerts. It's holding a motorcycle race as well. That fair starts Wednesday and runs through Labor Day. Today is the last chance to see the Packers practice in person. The team's last public training camp practice will be held today at 1215 this afternoon. The Packers are 2-1 and one in the preseason after losing to the Raiders in Oakland Friday night with their backups playing most of the game. They'll finish the preseason in Kansas City against the Chiefs on Thursday night before hosting the Bears to start the regular season on Sunday night, September 9th. The Killers and the Violent Femmes are going to play the first concerts at the Pfizer Forum in Milwaukee later on this week. Tens of thousands of people came out for the stadium's grand opening yesterday. The governor, Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett, were at the ribbon cutting along with the Greek freak, Danica's favorite player. Uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo and former Bucks star Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was there as well. The new arena is right down the street from the Bradley Center where that team played for the last 30 years. The Bucks play their first preseason game in the Pfizer Forum October 3rd against the Chicago Bulls. It's quite the crowd there. Yeah, from basketball to baseball now, Hawaii is this year's Little League World Series champion. The team from Honolulu beat South Korea yesterday by the score of three to nothing. Love 12 and 13 year old boys going nuts there. <laughs> Hawaii's third ever Little League championship, their first in 10 years. And on a serious note, they're going back to some serious oh, rain yeah. in Honolulu. So hopefully everybody, they've been gone for like two or three weeks. Hopefully yeah. homes are fine and all that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right, five, there's 624 right now in Madison. Police are investigating a home invasion this morning where a mom and her three kids were targeted. The day's top stories are coming up. Including the latest on a Milwaukee man shot at a video game tournament on Sunday. The news is back in the morning on News 3 this morning.
This morning, the city of Madison will be notifying 1,200 more homeowners of a potential flood risk. I'm Josh Butter, live in downtown with the very latest conditions. This is News 3 This Morning. Good morning and welcome to the final half hour of News 3 This Morning. It is 627 on this Monday, August 27th. And boy, was that water high in that storm drain. Sewers are yep. full. No one's looking forward to any possible more rain coming, except that's what Hattie McLean out on the Hattie <laughs> patio this morning says. Not today necessarily, but as we look into our future. Good morning, Hats. Good morning. Yeah, we have a little bit of rain to talk about this morning. Better chances, though, for the entire area to see some rain late in the day on Tuesday. Let's get you up to date with the forecast, though. I did add alert days into the forecast for today and tomorrow. Two reasons. Today, it's because of the high heat and humidity. You know, we have plenty of moisture to work with in the atmosphere, and you can feel it already this morning. It's sticky outside. Sun's barely even up. On Tuesday, the alert days in the forecast for the potential for severe weather coming later in the day. Now let's take a look at the radar map this morning. Some scattered showers working their way into southwestern Wisconsin. We'll look at future radar. This is the uh, radar's forecast for that rain, and it does hold it together through southwestern Wisconsin, making it uh, into the Madison area just after 9 o'clock this morning. So there is still the potential through around 10 or 11 o'clock for some showers and isolated thunderstorms across southern Wisconsin. The rest of the day, though, the afternoon looks dry. will actually clear out and really heat up. 88 is the high today with heat index values close to 100 later on this afternoon. Now let's get an update on your first alert traffic. You're seeing a lot of road closure uh, icons on the map on the isthmus that is due to flooding and water on the roads there. So uh, keep in mind, still many uh, roads are blocked downtown. No issues on the Beltline right now. As we look out around Dane County, just one road closure left due to the flooding, and that's on Highway 14 between KP and 78, basically between Black Earth and Mazomany. That part of the road still shut down, but no accidents to report right now. Travel on the interstate looking good. And that's your first alert traffic. Thank you very much, Hattie. So that's good news, at least about the no traffic backing yeah. up. So the city has already passed out more than 160,000 sandbags. We're going to get an update on the flooding in the city of Madison from the mayor this afternoon at 1 o'clock. Yeah, in the meantime, the city is trying to keep as much traffic off the isthmus as possible. Josh Breider is joining us this morning from East Washington Avenue with the very latest. Josh, good morning. Good morning. We showed you a little bit ago. Uh, check out these storm drains right now. The water is almost to the top, and that's why right now city crews are on standby, ready to close down more lanes if necessary. They reopened all inbound lanes of East Washington due to dry conditions on the surface. Mifflin and Johnson streets are still blocked off this morning, though. But the city stresses to drivers be prepared for more lane closures and street closures that could happen at any time. This morning, Madison's mayor is asking people who live and work downtown to avoid driving down here if possible to help ease traffic or even stagger their work hours or work from home today. With more rain in the forecast, the worry right now is flash flooding because the storm drains are so full as you just saw. We learned overnight the city streets division will be out today handing out flyers to 1,200 homes added to that flash flood risk area. As you mentioned so far, 160,000 sandbags have been filled and placed into position, and they still have those locations across the city. They're also asking for volunteers right now to help fill those. But guys, pretty crazy uh, image there of that water right at the top of that storm drain. Yeah, no one wants to see that that close. No. Imagine. All right, Josh, thank you so much. Appreciate it. 631 right now and new this morning. Madison detectives are looking for two armed suspects who broke into a north side home with a mom and her three kids inside. This happened around 240 this morning on Murrow Court, just a few blocks from Lindbergh Elementary School. Two men reportedly kicked in a side door and held the woman at gunpoint. The overnight sergeant says this robbery was targeted. It was not random. No one was hurt. We'll be sure to share any updates throughout the day on channel3000.com. The Wanakee man accused of shooting and killing his neighbor in front of her son and grandson is scheduled to be in court this afternoon. We're talking about 78-year-old Ronald Jenny, who faces charges of first-degree murder in the incident. Prosecutors say he shot 54-year-old Julie Anderson. That investigators found his day planner where he reportedly wrote, shot Julie. He also reportedly asked detectives about Anderson's condition after he was arrested. He is currently being held at the Dane County Jail 
on a million dollar cash bond. State lawmakers are looking over a new report showing that roughly 3,000 convicted sex offenders are unaccounted for in Wisconsin. The Department of Corrections reports those offenders have not signed up for the registry that's supposed to track where they are when they get out of prison or jail. Of the 2,735 people who are not registered, state agents have an active arrest warrant out for 308 of them. Wisconsin law requires anyone convicted of a sex offense to let the state know where they are living. As of last week, there were more than 25,000 people on that list. A Milwaukee man will be in surgery this morning after being shot at a Florida video game tournament over the weekend. Tim Anselimo is part of the Milwaukee Bucks gaming team. Leah Lynchide's reporting on his recovery this morning. She's live in the newsroom with what we know. Good morning. Good morning. Pretty terrifying moment for Tim Anselimo and his family and everyone else involved in this shooting this weekend in Jacksonville, where three people are dead, including the shooter. The Milwaukee Bucks confirmed Anselimo is a member of their video gaming team. He was one of 11 people taken to the hospital after a man shot up that gaming tournament Sunday before killing himself. Now, we heard from Anselimo's mom on Twitter, who said he was shot several times but is doing okay. She shared a picture of Florida Governor Rick Scott visiting him in the hospital. Tim himself said on Twitter, quote, devastating no words. Surgery in the morning, thanks to all who reached out. Now, Bucks Gaming is a new addition to the organization. Its first season ended just a couple of weeks ago this summer. Tim's mom, by the way, is warning about a fake GoFundMe going around. He should be in surgery sometime this morning, but again, he is expected to be okay. A fake GoFundMe. Unbelievable that people are trying to yeah. Yeah. get a scam right now on something like this. All right, Leah, thank you. 634, almost your time this morning and staying in Milwaukee. The city says it is not to blame for what happened between police officer and a Bucks player. Now, Sterling Brown, you may remember, filed a lawsuit against the city claiming he was unlawfully arrested outside of Walgreens in January. Brown also says that police used excessive force when he was tased and forced to the ground. Brown was taken to jail but never charged with a crime. A city attorney filed a 51-page document in response to the lawsuit that says Brown is the one at fault. That's different from what Milwaukee's police chief said earlier this summer. Our department conducted an investigation into the incident which revealed members acted inappropriately. I'm sorry this incident escalated to this level. Over the weekend, Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett said that he hopes the city will reach a settlement with Brown and avoid the full-blown litigation process. It'll be interesting to see what happens yeah. with that. 634 right now, there's a major partnership being announced today between the UW and Foxconn. We'll share the latest in the morning sprint. And one of the university's most familiar faces will be leaving campus at the end of the upcoming school year. The latest on band director Mike Lecrone is coming up in about 10 minutes on News 3 this morning.
Welcome back to the program 638 right now the time in the morning we always ask you to share a little bit of your morning with us and since it's so miserable out <laughs> seriously heat and humidity wise I picked this picture that Peter had posted on our Facebook page of Schoolhouse Beach in Door County Washington Island it just looks much nicer there yes I'm gonna guess it's much nicer though. It is very zen. That picture just good feels, stuff. yeah, calming. Yeah. That's really good stuff. Just take it in. Peter, thank you for sharing too. That is much needed this morning. Uh, what does your morning look like? Take a picture, post it over on our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it is. Use the hashtag MyNewsThroughMorning and we share our favorites every morning here on the program. All right, a DNR warden and a southern Wisconsin outdoorsman are buying coffee tonight for millennials and younger people interested in hunting. The number of gun deer licenses sold here in Wisconsin's down significantly the last 10 years. Janesville Gazette reports the average age of Wisconsin hunters has gone up from 41 to 51 in that time frame as well. The coffee and talk session is called the Sportsman's Campfire. It'll be at the Stillwater Coffee Company in Elkhorn tonight at 6 o'clock. The Madison's Children's Museum is going to shut down for a couple hours later today so that kids with autism and other sensory challenges can have some time inside without feeling overwhelmed. It's part of a pilot program in connection with the Wisconsin Early Autism Project. Families can come have some educational fun inside in an environment that supports their kids' needs. That event is free for families. It runs from 5 until 7 tonight. If you're ever worried about leaving your kids home alone for a couple hours, there's an event in Stoughton later today to make sure they're prepared for any emergencies that might happen. Stoughton Hospital is holding a workshop for kids ages 9 and up to learn how to handle anything from first aid to fire safety and other emergency situations. That workshop starts at 9 o'clock this morning, costs $30 per kid. You can register for the class on Stoughton Hospital. Dot org. And as I was telling you earlier, the rule at our house, mm -hmm. no chemistry experience. No chemistry not experience. Not allowed to do chemistry when the parents Along are Along with, gone. you know, like not answering the door and things like that. But yeah. number one. No chemistry. Just got to enforce that when you can. 640 right now. So on Hattie's humidity meter, we have zoomed past need more deodorant and stay in the air conditioning. She says we are at the do not talk to me level mm -hmm. of how uncomfortable it is outside. And it will be later today as well. It's an alert day because of it, and there's one tomorrow because of chance chances for more serious rain. Her forecast is up next. First, though, it's August 27th. We want to say happy birthday <laughs> to Charlotte, Hazel, Lindsay, and all the kids turning three today. Thanks so much for letting us celebrate with you right here on News 3 this morning.
Welcome back. You're looking live this morning at East Washington Avenue. You are looking at it heading uh, toward the Capitol, I believe, there where crews are ready to close or open lanes, depending on how bad flooding gets downtown. We saw from Josh there earlier the storm sewers super high with water. We will have a live update from downtown coming up in the morning sprint. The UW Marching Band will continue preparing for the football team's home opener Friday night after the band's longtime director, Mike Lecrone, announced his retirement over the weekend. So Lecrone says after 50 years leading the Badger Band, he's going to retire at the end of the upcoming school year. Says he made the decision weeks ago. Didn't want to announce it publicly, though, until he talked with his students. Now, Mike Lecrone is 82 years old. He lost his wife last fall after she struggled with a long-time illness. The university says it will conduct a national search for his replacement. Oh, one of my favorite people on campus. And now to one of our favorite people in the newsroom, Hattie McLean, with a couple alert days to talk about. Yeah, maybe not your favorite person today because <laughs> we're talking about high heat index values today. Take a look at Future Track heat index starting this afternoon. Already 93 is what it'll feel like at 1.30 in the afternoon. Madison not alone. Everyone suffering with the high heat and humidity today. Heat index values will climb into the upper 90s in most places this afternoon. Even as we head towards the evening hours, 8.30 p.m., still feeling like it's in the upper 80s. So a very uncomfortable day ahead. For that reason, I've added an alert to the forecast for today and another one for tomorrow. Today is going to be the worst day as far as heat and humidity is concerned. Tomorrow the alert day is in, in a place more for the chance for severe weather later on in the day. Could see some damaging winds and large hail and of course heavy rain as well. Now the drought monitor, the latest map that they've put out indicates that there's a good chunk of the state that's actually a little bit dry right now. Parts of the uh, west central part of the state in a moderate drought. Now we do have some rain on the way, maybe not as much rain as they need through west central Wisconsin, but parts of northern Wisconsin and here in southern Wisconsin are likely to see one to two inches of rain with this next system moving through. Now we're already seeing some rain in the area this morning. Showers, isolated thunderstorms filling in across southern uh, southwestern Wisconsin. More activity as well up towards Green Bay this morning. The severe weather outlook for today does indicate a slight risk for severe weather across a good part of the state. Best chances, I think, are going to be in the northern half of the state later today into tonight. We do have a chance here in southern Wisconsin for some severe weather coming on Tuesday. And again, that will be late in the day. A live look from the WIC TV sky cam showing you cloudy skies this morning. Kind of a dreary, very muggy start to the day. It's 75 degrees outside here in Madison, 77 in Mineral Point. Janesville is the warm spot, almost 80 right now. Take a look at these dew points. Many locations have dew points in the low to mid 70s, which is downright tropical. Dew points here in Madison and all across southern Wisconsin are going to stay in the 70s today, even climbing into the mid and upper 70s for a time this afternoon. Now that rain we have this morning will move through the area between 9 and 11 o'clock, but by lunchtime, things quiet down and skies actually begin to clear out for the afternoon. Look for high temperatures in the upper 80s, but again, it'll feel much warmer than that today when you factor in the humidity. Now overnight tonight, best chances for rain will be across the northern part of the state. We're likely to wake up dry tomorrow morning. Temperatures will still climb into the mid 80s with those chances for rain returning late in the afternoon. Here's 5.30 p.m. You can see that line forming and then tracking across southern Wisconsin. Heavy rain is possible as those storms move through. Here's a look at another forecast model with precipitation pretty widespread one to two inches, maybe some isolated higher amounts and some spots as well. We definitely don't need any more rain here in Madison and parts of southern Wisconsin, but unfortunately it's in the forecast. Behind that front though on Tuesday gets a little more comfortable at least for a few days. We're looking at highs in the 70s. Rain chances then as we head into the upcoming holiday weekend, Friday and Saturday. Here's our pet walk forecast. Wolfie and Madison, it's kind of how you feel on a day like yes. today. Especially if you're covered in that much fur. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it looks like a Siberian Husky. He wants cooler temperatures. Yeah, I would think so. I think we all do, yeah. honestly. Thank you, Hattie. You're welcome. We're going to have a live report on the flooding situation in Madison in the morning sprint up next on News 3 this morning.
651 time now for the morning sprint. Taddy has an alert day for the heat and humidity and Leah's updating us on the condition of a Milwaukee man shot at a gaming conference conference in Florida over the weekend. However, we want to start with Josh Spider, who's sharing the latest on flooding here in Madison. Good morning, Josh. Good morning with more rain in the forecast. The city says you need to be prepared for more flash flooding and with that street closures. Water on most streets is down, but full storm drains mean a couple inches of rain could lead to more floods. That's why the city streets division will be out today handing out flyers to the 1200 homeowners who were added to that flood flash flood risk area overnight. The city is recommending people avoid driving downtown as a way to help ease traffic congestion. This morning, Madison Metro Transit is still offering free rides, but just remember those buses could be detoured or delayed. Madison garbage crews are also going to be out making special runs this morning, picking up anything damaged during the flooding. Thank you, Josh. The city is offering more sandbags to anybody who needs them. It's already passed out more than 160,000 of them. It has them available at a lot of the city's parks. It'll help move things along faster. If you bring your own shovel, City of Monona is offering up sandbags for people living there as well as water on Lake Monona rises. Yeah, Highway 14 between Middleton and Cross Plains is back open this morning. The Wisconsin DOT opened up that stretch of the highway around noon yesterday. Through traffic is still being detoured this morning, so drivers should try and use U.S. Highway 12 and State Highway 78 to get around that. The Highway 14 bridge west of Black Earth is still washed out. Meanwhile, work is scheduled to begin this week on Main Street and Sun Prairie. Governor Scott Walker approved an emergency contract for more than a million dollars to rebuild the intersection of Main and Highway 19 after the explosion there. Construction is expected to be finished up by the end of November. Madison residents are going to get the chance this week to comment on a proposed water rate increase. The hearing in front of the state's Public Service Commission comes as the Madison Water Utility is dealing with a $6 million deficit. If approved by the PSC, the average Madison Water user would pay about $90 more per year. Now, the utility's last rate increase was in September of 2015. Madison police are looking for two men they say broke into a north side home and pulled a gun on a mother and three kids inside. This happened around 2.40 this morning on Murrow Court, a few blocks from Lindbergh Elementary School. The two suspects allegedly kicked in a side door, held the mom at gunpoint and robbed the family. Nobody was hurt. The Wanakee man accused of shooting and killing his neighbor is expected back in court this afternoon. We're talking about 78-year-old Ronald Jenny, who faces murder charges for shooting 54-year-old Julie Anderson while her teenage son and four-year-old grandson were in her apartment. He's being held in the Dane County Jail right now on a $1 million cash bond. A Milwaukee man will be in surgery sometime this morning after a deadly mass shooting in Florida yesterday. Tim Antolimo is one of 11 people hurt by a 24-year-old man who opened fire at a video gaming conference in Jacksonville, killing two people, then turning the gun on himself. The Milwaukee Bucks confirmed Antolimo is one of their gaming members. It's a new branch of the franchise that just wrapped up its season a couple of weeks ago. Antolimo is doing okay. He said on Twitter he's going into surgery this morning. His mom, though, is warning people not to donate to a fake GoFundMe making the rounds on social media. And our forecast for today starts with a little bit of rain across southern Wisconsin. We see some scattered showers, isolated thunderstorms working their way into southwestern Wisconsin. Relatively weak at this hour, they'll continue to track to the north and east as well as weaken. Now heat index today, it's going to be a sticky day today. Heat index values in the mid and upper 90s later on this afternoon. For that reason, today is an alert day due to that high heat and humidity. Thank you, Hattie. The public's going to be able to honor Arizona Senator John McCain this week after he died from brain cancer over the weekend. Mourners will be able to visit his coffin at the Arizona State Capitol in Phoenix on Wednesday before he's going to be moved to the U.S. Capitol on Friday. McCain's funeral service will be held Saturday at the National Cathedral before he's buried at the U.S. Naval Academy in Maryland on Sunday. Governor Walker ordered flags here in Wisconsin to fly at half staff over the weekend in honor of Senator McCain. John McCain was 81 years old. A former top Vatican official wants Pope Francis to step down, claiming he knew about sexual assault allegations against an American cardinal and did nothing about it. The Vatican's former ambassador to the U.S., Archbishop Carlo Vigano, told CBS News that he spoke with Pope Francis in 2013 about how Washington Cardinal Theodore McCarrick was guilty of sexual abuse. McCarrick resigned last month over claims he had abused seminary students and an altar boy. Vigano says the Pope can set an example for all church officials who helped cover up abuses by stepping down. UW-Madison set to announce a new partnership with Foxconn later today. Chancellor Rebecca Blank will join the head of Foxconn Technology 
at the Wisconsin Institutes for Discovery building a little bit later on this morning. Foxconn recently created a new international engineering program at UW-Milwaukee and is working to train future employees for its new North American manufacturing plant that's being built in Racine County. We'll share the details of this new partnership on News 3 at 5. It is almost 6.57 right now. Still some issues on the east side of the isthmus because of flooding. Let's check in with Josh Tim with your first alert traffic. Good morning, Josh. Good morning, guys. Well, it is continuing to get busier on the westbound side of the Belt Line, especially between Stoughton Road and West Broadway. It's going to add extra five minutes to your drive. Highway 14 still closed between Cross Plains and Black Earth due to the flooding. Here in Madison, Johnson Street is still closed between Fordham Avenue and Baldwin, along with some other streets around town. So make sure you plan ahead and take a different route. So far, other main routes leading into the city, though, are cruising along at the usual speeds with no major crashes or delays. Your first alert traffic, I'm Josh Tim. Thank you, Josh. And a little bit of sunshine on, sunshine on the Queen Bee Radio Sky Cam, but some rain elsewhere across southern Wisconsin. Take a look at the radar map this morning. A few light showers working their way through the area. No severe weather is expected this morning. Alert days, though, in the forecast today and tomorrow. All right, thank you so much, Hattie. We'll have the latest tomorrow morning on News 3 This Morning. Thanks for being with us. Making plans that are weather dependent? Get an accurate 12 hour, even a 10 day forecast. Download the Channel 3000 First Alert Weather app and start planning.